Another theater and art person um, is uh, Steve Flaherty and Trevor Hardwick. They could come down, like Steve and Trevor. Steve and, and Trevor, we met through Bob Green and, and folks out in uh, Sad Harbor. Uh, we became very close and really good friends of the family, uh, cooking and bringing us stuff. And they were constantly, through Melinda's illness, bringing us uh, flowers and chocolates and soups. And uh, uh, our artistic talk was all the time. And, and Steve, like Carmen, are sort of like Lincoln Center. And I, I don't know if you saw the photo that I sent around is the Henry Moore here, the water in Lincoln Center. You know, it's just, it's Melinda. And uh, uh, Steve and Trevor really were in our home with our boys uh, a lot over these past years. And I just wanted them to say a couple words. Okay. I'm Trevor, and this is Steve. <laughs> you can use the post office. If I don't read it, I'll mess it up, and you don't want to see that. <laughs> After all these very intelligent people speaking already, I think we're going to be the comedic. <laughs> <laughs> well, we met Melinda, Joe, Robert, James, uh, almost 10 years ago in St. Carver, uh, at a neighbor's 4th of July party. And to say the least, it's always a little bit awkward living in the U.S. and being English on such a day. <laughs> <laughs> on this particular occasion, her unthinking or sadistic host, I'm not still sure which she was, would recite part of um, the Declar De Declaration of Independence each year. So Melinda and I were just getting to know one another, and our host came, came by with a sheet of paper with the De De can't say it, Declaration of Independence on it. And she asked us to read a portion for ourselves. <laughs> Melinda shot her a dagger blow, looked at me, rolled her eyes, <laughs> and I knew I was going to like her. <laughs> As we got to know Melinda a little better, we found we had much in common. A love of the arts, conversation, and our general inquisitive outlook on life. We shared many afternoons and evenings around the pool or at the dinner table, chatting or philosophizing over a meal I prepared, only to watch Melinda just rearrange things around her plate rather than eat it. She didn't have much of an appetite. She was always much more interested in the conversation than the meal itself. And a slight bit figure conscious, too, if I might say. <laughs> Melinda and I were both equestrians and shared the same trainer at a stable called Sagpon Farm in Bridgehampton. Robert and James, you both know that place very well. Um, our trainer, Joe, would assess our progress and try to assign us to the most suitable horse available. At one point, Melinda had taken a shine to a troubled gelding named Chester, who had been abused in his early years, and was still very nervous about life in general. I arrived at the stable one morning to find that I'd been assigned to Chester that day, and Melinda a new horse that we'd never heard of. So I was heading towards the stable area, and I heard Melinda in her impeccably English accent calling, Donde esta Chester? <laughs> Melinda mm -hmm. always said in English whichever language she was speaking. <laughs> <laughs> she had decided that, even though our trainer had thought differently, she was indeed riding chess. <laughs> in the sake of friendship, I let that one go. <laughs> Melinda left us all with many precious memories. Another friend told me that the legacy that Melinda had left her was to live more boldly and more extremely, which are things that she did in spades every day, and what made her who she was. Mm -hmm. We'd just like to finish by reciting a very short poem by Melinda's beloved William Blake. For us, it masterfully sums up in four short lines a way to approach friendships and relationships. It's called Eternity. He who binds to himself a joy does the winged life destroy. But he who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise. Thank you. <laughs>